hi and welcome to whatever this is i am falguni and my name is pranil and we are graduate students uh, and we are here to talk about random stuff and to share that with people whoever is listening to this what's the last place you traveled to and you liked a lot san francisco obviously yeah that was good and yeah i mean every time i go to a new place mm. where I- like i'm traveling or like exploring and i don't know where to begin right like here's the thing you have to stare at a map of a place enough before you figure out what you want to do there mm-hmm. it's not like you open the map and you're just like oh this neighborhood looks great i should go there that sometimes happens but it you need certain exposure it may may it be from the map may it be from your friends telling you oh this part of the city is good or this part of the city is good something you have to have something so the first time you i open my map i don't know what i want to do in san francisco right so it was my first weekend there and i was like okay i have to do something but i don't know where to begin um so my trick wherever i go to a new city and i don't know what to do is i pick three bookstores that are walking distance from each other but not like like 30 minute walk from each other or something mm-hmm. not like a very small walk and then i going it like i just decide okay bookstore one bookstore two bookstore three and on the way whatever catches my fancy i'll do it mm-hmm. so that is what i did in san francisco i started in the mission and then i forgot the names of all the other neighborhoods but i started in the mission went to a bookstore then i saw an alley and then i saw this independent co op bakery and what not so i did all of those things and the three bookstore pilgrimage turned into six bookstore pilgrimage i also ended up in a fancy district so i ate another dinner and all of those things so that was nice and you asked me about city lights no that was a different weekend though okay okay yeah so 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 my first weekend i was supposed to go to city lights but i didn't make it because i got so distracted on the way um so when you went to city lights was it open is it still operational yeah i went inside okay that is good because i know that when covid started i heard this on the news mm-hmm. that city light was closing down i guess it was temporarily i guess then, yeah yeah no it it was open and it had a lot of people in it but you went to city lights and you didn't go to the poets room and yes. i went the second time i second time my friend was over and she was like let's go and i went and we went to that poets room and both of us agreed that we don't belong here so we went there we were lost and we came back <laughs> one of the main reasons why i went into city lights was for the poets room but that, that's the thing right it's like it's like not knowing something about some culture yeah yeah going exactly to going you know like i, I don't exactly. know anything about that so what Dude. dude when i went to san francisco i was like so excited all throughout i wish i had documented the whole travel because i so, i was like traveling san francisco and berkeley back to like um, almost every, every day i was traveling from berkeley to san francisco and back see exactly that's the point you you bad mouth me for not going to the poets room at least i've been to san francisco and seen the golden gate bridge can you say that for yourself i have seen the golden gate bridge i haven't walked on the But golden gate bridge not in a postcard or a souvenir or a magnet like in reality i have seen the golden gate bridge in reality oh please you told me you didn't i did i have pictures i can show you pictures i can literally so, screen share pictures right now no postcard <laughs> no <laughs> yeah again okay fine you went to the golden gate bridge with the same enthusiasm i went to the poets room so yeah yeah similar that i understand <laughs> i can understand <laughs> that i can understand that like i haven't been close to the golden gate bridge but you know the golf course that comes right before you get on the street that goes to the golden gate bridge presidio on the presidio maybe i don't remember it's been some was it time. like on the northern part of the city or the western part northern the part like little yeah, like so that's the presidio okay. very very north part like the one that goes towards the golden gate bridge that's presidio so, yeah yeah so that's presidio i have seen the golden gate bridge from no, there so, i mean no one wants you to go actually near the golden gate bridge because near the bridge you don't get good views also like the the when i used to th- say that i haven't been to the golden gate bridge i meant that I haven't walked on the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, I have biked on the Golden Gate Bridge, and that was fun. Yeah, I if I had been there for quite some time, 
mm-hmm. more than like four days. I would have definitely done that, but I was there for four or five days. I think more more cities should have this kind of biking tour, some things like that, because the biking tour I went to was incredible. Um, it was a very good use of time and very fun way to look at the bridge. But the problem is most cities don't even have bike paths on their bridges, so forget right. about bike tours. Oh, it's something I really um, regret is going to Brooklyn and not walking or biking on the Brooklyn Bridge. Because once again, like time was a factor. I was there for just four days. Yeah. I guess four nights, three days. Yeah. So didn't yeah. have the time. Okay. Yeah. And when I was traveling, just before I was actually traveling to San Francisco, I was posting on Facebook at the time, like how excited I was. Yeah. And that was like a dream come true for me. Like the reason I'm saying that the poets room interested me so much because like so much into that section of the- American literature. Do you go to the Beat Museum? Of course, of course, yeah. yes. Jack Kerouac's um, desk is there. Uh, but yeah, I was trying to read this book. Who's that guy, man? Who's the guy with the mice and men? John Steinbeck. Hmm. I was reading. I was trying to read of mice and men, but it was. I also had bought a Canary Row. He. It's also yep. written by him. Yeah. And I was thinking of going to Canary Row while reading Canary Row. But I had to cut my trip short, so I didn't. Okay. I took, I went to Cafeteria Stay where uh, Francis Ford Coppola wrote a big part of the screenplay for The Godfather. And I had lunch there while I worked on some thesis <laughs> while sitting there. And it felt nice. <laughs> Cafeteria Stay is amazing, man. Even after all these years. And like they have uh big big film stars directors poets everyone who come there to have breakfast and stuff but they still are only cash on uh, like they are just cash only they don't accept cards yes there's a lot of cash on then, the place i think one of the things i was telling my friend a friend of mine last week last month i think was that the reason i liked san francisco so much was because it reminded me so much of kolkata Mm-hmm. Like were he like just talking about culture, heritage, actually not not people, having anything, any material in it anymore. People protest about everything. Protest about uh, everything. People just move out of the city with in the first opportunity they get. But everyone is still like so nostalgic and so emotional and yeah. so culturally attached to San Francisco as a city. It's the same thing that happens with Kolkata, right? Even the cafeteria stay thing, the thing that I was just saying that even after all these years and attracting so many big shots as as customers, they are still cash only. Mm-hmm. And like so many cafes in San Francisco look ancient, very much like Calcutta. In Calcutta, you have like legendary cafes, legendary restaurants that looks like spice hotels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, San Francisco is definitely like that. People are just like, oh my God, we used to be great. It's like, okay. In 2019, I think I watched a movie called The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Did you watch it at any point? No. I, I will highly recommend that. Great movie, great movie. Did you go to the pub beside um, City Lights? I went to one bar in Berkeley that too someone took me. Uh, I don't like seek out bars much. Right. Yeah. Uh, All the bars and pubs I went to in San Francisco were like like cultural hotspots that used to be back in the days. I ate so much Asian food in San Francisco. Oh Oh, yeah. How was Chinatown? Chinatown was great, but Chinatown is Chinatown. It's like whatever. But I mean, the mission is great. Like the mission, I went to a vegan Mexican restaurant and that was good. Like that was like really good. It, it was not like they just put some cauliflower in a taco and gave you, you know, it was actually good. There was like a jackfruit taco and that like tasted very meaty and things like that. It was very nice. I went to a vegan Vietnamese place. Again, the same thing. Like they had actual fake meat that tasted different from each other, not just like plop tofu onto everything. Yeah. Um, no. Somebody of- told me recently about jackfruit chalupas. And that apparently jackfruit chalupas are amazing. I'm trying to find a place that serves jackfruit chalupas. 
I don't know what a chalupa is. I've heard of it only in the top of the commercial. Uh, but okay. Dude, the time I went to the Chinatown mm-hmm. and I saw fishes being sold on the street, open market of fishes. Yes. I miss home so much now. <laughs> yeah. You were a teacher, you would have said, what is this, a fish market? And then people in Chinatown would be, yes. Yes, it is a fish market. <laughs> I watched Shang-Chi recently and there is this whole fight scene in San Francisco in the beginning of Shang-Chi. Um, and I, when, while I was in San, uh, San Francisco, I was reading about it that the Muni, which is the bus system in San Francisco, didn't want their logo shown in that fight scene because this fight scene happens oh, on, wow. on a bus in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And they were like, please don't show our logo on it because uh, it is too violent. And we don't want us associated with that. So that was a fun fact. And uh, I had read about that like then when I was there. Uh, and I only watch Shang-Chi now. So I was hoping there'll be a lot of San Francisco in the movie. But it's only like in the first third of the movie. You know, a big part of what all I wanted to see, like, as you said, you you triangulate San Francisco, you triangulate a San Francisco basis of bookstores. Mm-hmm. A lot of the things that I triangulated the city with came from this book, Allen Ginsberg in America. Mm-hmm. I read through this and I uh, like wrote down all the important places that they mention in the book that had like culturally important stuff that happened over there during the beat generation. And I triangulated the city according to that. Nice. Uh, I went to a little uh, black liberation tour or whatever it's called in Oakland. And that was nice because it was, it had 10 stops. Mm. It was was kind of a long walk, but it was not that much of a long walk. Like if you walked constantly, it would take 30 minutes, but of course, because you're making stops and learning about it, it takes you like an hour and a half. So they showed murals, they showed where the Black Panthers were headquartered and like where very uh, seminal lawsuits were uh, had like the results and like just so many things because uh, the only thing most people know about Oakland is Black Panthers. Most people don't even know that. Um, So, but there are so many stories that are unconnected to the Panthers and like way going back to the like late 19th century even uh, about progressive thought and black people raising to eminence and like causing social change and things like that. So everyone thinks whatever progressive things happened in Oakland was somehow tied to the Panthers, but they were not. Like Oakland has a much, much longer history of mm-hmm. this. Um, so that was very interesting to know. Like we saw a lot of, lot of things. Okay. Here is the story. Mm-hmm. So when I was traveling to San Francisco, that was the first time I traveled without any prior knowledge of where I'm going and stuff. I mean, I knew the names of the places I wanted to see, which included uh, City Lights, the Bit uh, Museum and all that. But I had no clue what I was going after, going to do after what. So I traveled from the airport to the city and Then in the city, I was taking buses. And this was the first time I completely traveled on the basis of what maps would tell me. And I had no clue how detailed Google Maps can be. So when it told me to catch a bus, apparently that that same number bus runs through different routes. So I caught a wrong route ka bus. And it landed me at some place... which was completely in the opposite direction of where I was supposed to go. I mean, I went south instead of north. I was actually going to Legion of Honor. You have been to Legion of Honor, I'm sure. You haven't been to Legion of Honor? I've been to the Mart Museum and I have been to SF MoMA. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, So I was traveling to Legion of Honor, which was on the north side. But instead, I came to the south. So I had to like change uh, buses over there. And it was a five-way intersection. Mm. And there were bus stops in the middle of the intersection. So there was a plot of... uh, Yeah, Yeah, it's so weird. They they have a plot of a sidewalk in the middle of an intersection. Yeah. Where they have bus stops there. They have bus stops on every side. 
and the buses like there are buses that stop on those side bus stops and ones that stop in the middle yeah and i could not tell from maps so you were not in the south you were in downtown okay it was south of where i started from okay that makes sense yes yeah so that happened so i was like running from here and there along with one bag and finally i got one person who seemed like a nice guy. Hey, dude dude was uh, reading some book i for- forgot what book but like it was a good book oh well, that is uh, what <laughs> Nice so i was like th- this man would know stuff oh, oh Look, because there is more coming there is more coming geography there is more coming so i asked this man i am going to leisure of honor can you help me and he's like yeah i'm going towards that direction come with me we can go together and all that worked out fine we went on the same bus yeah. but when we were traveling to legion of honor you know legion of honor has the statue of roda the thinker in the in the entrance so do told me a random fact about roda that there are three statues of the thinker in the world and one of them is in san francisco the other one is in paris the third one is somewhere in the world ye roda roda kya hai ye roda roda good good awesome uh, roda. turns uh. out roda okay turns out that fact is completely false <laughs> <laughs> i was making a roda post on instagram then i went to like uh, do a research and like read up on the statues of um, the thinker which is around in the world and then i realized that the statue in san francisco is not even made by roda himself it's made by a student of roda like in in his workshop so it's still considered as as roda statue but a student of his made that statue and that story of there are only three statues of the thinker is complete bullshit because i saw another statue of the thinker when i was in dc maybe that was also made by a student maybe that was also made by a student exactly there there are only a couple uh, which roda actually made by himself the rest of them came from his workshop but made by his students so that was very interesting but i had uh, really good thai food when i was traveling there thai food is good they have all asian food game there is like yeah. the boba there is just out of this world it's not out of this world i'm sure asia has better boba but um it's out of america it's so good like uh, boba is ruined for me here um by the way i came back and i was telling my friends about uh, this place that has um tea with salted cheese and it sounds weird right it sounds like oh, do i really want to eat that you know but it's like cold like iced tea uh black tea topped with salted cheese like liquid cheese like it's almost that like that sounds very weird it sounds weird but it's delicious like i was like okay it sounds weird but i have money to waste so i'm going to go and try this and i tried it and i was so happy Oof. it was just 5 dollars <laughs> but i i know you don't have that money so you would think i am too off but who told you i don't have that money i should mention I over here i have a show off for like 5 dollars right if you have all that money but anyway uh, i went and tried it and it was excellent and the next time so i was i came here and i was telling a friend about that place it's called happy lemon for all the audience we have you should know here's our recommendation all the two people listening to us speak which is just the two of us exactly so it's, it's called happy lemon um and it's apparently only a west coast thing um and like it started in i want to say china or hong kong one of the two and it moved to the west coast because that's how asian things enter american market um so i was like okay i'm going to miss this place and like there's there's this tea with salted cheese and uh, you can add any kind of boba or jelly to it as you want right and the boba mm-hmm. was great the tea was great the cheese was great it was amazing and i come back and i'm telling my friends about it and my friend google said because he's going to san francisco soon and when he googles it he's like hey there's one in evanston 
So while I was gone, uh, the one in Evanston opened in August. So I was in San Francisco when the first branch of Happy Lemon outside of the West Coast opened in Evanston. Hashtag proud. Um, so I went to that one too. It is close, but it's not as good as the West Coast ones. It kind of reminds me how I how I haven't had eaten at RACP when I was in Calcutta, but oh, I had RACP <laughs> when I have were in Evanston RACP chain. Evanston uh, name to Shangri La. So Wait, I think what? they tie, they severed their ties with the RACP chain. I think, uh, but the menu is the same. The food is still good. Uh, at least the dishes I tried again, they are still mm. same dishes. Uh, but the menu, the theme, the logo, all of that is gone. So they don't have that Howrah Bridge uh, picture, they Kolkata picture. Pictures still. Oh. They're just their menu. Yeah. They they just don't have the RHCP logo and things like that. Oh, by the way, San Francisco also has uh, at least two RHCP locations. I went there too. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So that's my yes. San Francisco had very good food. Yes, San Francisco is a very good place for Asian people or people who like Asian food. Dude, I bought so many f- books from San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Actually, from City Lights only. I because got- uh, yeah. because if you see a lot of those books that you, if you had spent some time in mm-hmm. in the Ports Room, you would see books which are um, which are published just from City Lights. You won't get those books anywhere. Yeah, I know because they are yeah. published. So why is that surprising? Their city lights are a publisher. Right. I mean, yeah, but a publisher than a bookstore. Yeah, right? the point is I'm saying it felt weird to me to go to satellites and buy other books. Okay. I don't yeah. know. I bought a lot of books that had nothing to do with the beat yeah, yeah. and I don't feel bad about it. But yeah, I bought a lot of books and uh, I found a few bookstores that like of course like used books and that kind of stuff. So I bought a lot of books, I read a lot of books and I sold them back and then bought new books with the money. I did a lot of that stuff. For the last one year, I haven't bought any books because I have, first of all, I have so many books in my house. And wow. secondly, I started to use the library more now that I'm reading again. Yeah, so I, I have been, I, have, I I was using library all the time until I went to San Francisco and I didn't have, I didn't want to get a card for a summer and things like right. that. I bought a bunch of books and resold them, which I think, I mean, I anyway think it's still better than buying books from Amazon. There uh, is this one book. I'm sorry. I, I interrupted you. Yeah, no, I'm just saying circulating books, uh, having a back market for books is I think a good thing. Mm-hmm. Or actually having a back market for anything. I think buying used things is great. So uh, the haunted bookshop at Iowa City, mm-hmm. they were struggling over the lockdown. So I got a $20 uh, gift card from them at that time, mm-hmm. which I did with a lot of places in our city, just like the support. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have to use that $20 at some point. Okay. So I don't know what to buy, but okay. there is this one book I'm searching for. Have you heard of Letters to Milena by Franz Kafka? No, uh, but uh, if you get me a nice collector's edition of something, I wouldn't mind. If you want ideas, uh, using those twenty dollars. Okay, I will think about it. Okay. All right. So yeah, uh, Franz Kafka's Letters to Milena is something I really wanted to re- want to read right now, mm-hmm. but I'm not finding it anywhere. Um, when I was going to San Francisco, I looked up like things to try there, and there was this one form of fried chicken. Mm-hmm. that a particular store in san francisco makes and it's like it's like one of the things that one should go for like it's a hidden gem in the city nice the thing is it has been such a long time since i went to san francisco i don't even remember the details of any of these things if i had yeah, time to like research on them i would remember I have, tell, I have to tell everyone i had the best vada pav in north and south america combined in San Francisco. Oh my God. And it was out of a food truck. It was like not one of those lame things where you sit at a table and eat a vada pav. You know, like it was a food truck. San and Francisco has Indian food, Indian snacks in form of food trucks? Not the city. Bay Area. Okay. Um, so this was in Sunnyvale, which is like, you don't see non-Indians there. It's just all. Wow. 
<laughs> it's just some asian some east asian people mostly indian people there um so but yeah it was a food truck and it was like the, there was this little alley that is full of food trucks like six seven food trucks were there uh, three of them were indian like the other three were mexican asian that kind of thing oh my god but that vada pav was to die for and they also had cutting chai in proper cutting chai glasses oh my god it was good it was so good i just remembered something when you were talking about uh, like uh, non american neighborhoods like mostly indian or southeast asian neighborhoods um the american part of the namesake the movie was it in new york or was it in san francisco bay area do you remember i think it was new york but i might be i think that it. makes more sense yeah i mean it doesn't necessarily yeah it makes right. sense because it was back in the what 70s 80s yeah so yeah, yeah back then the silicon valley wasn't much of a thing hmm. so i think new york makes more sense and i think i remember it to hmm. be what a movie man yeah um but yeah uh, a friend was... and i were planning to watch um the coke trilogy over the weekend yeah abbas ke aur samis nice i only watched that one movie out of those which one that is the one that we watched i don't remember which one it was yeah, i don't know which one but yeah i watched that yeah but i mean the the valley is good silicon valley is good for food I didn't really do much of the touristy stuff. Like I didn't go and pose near the Apple logo or whatever. Um, but it's good. the The peninsula has good food, uh, very very good food. Um, and yeah, it has like Marathi food and stuff as opposed to the rest of America, just as North Indian food. Like if you really stretch it, sometimes they have South Indian food. Yeah, the overall impression of mine of San Francisco is that. it's fun to visit i am not sure if i would say it's fun to live in um it has great weather great things to do very expensive horrible traffic the movie i talked about uh, the last black man in san francisco was basically about the housing crisis in san francisco san francisco has bad I mean, and it is messed up in terms of housing it's messed up and uh, the But that's why the pandemic hit it very hard because yep. uh, I was reading an article about what cities got the most affected by the uh, pandemic, and San Francisco is one of them because um, they don't have a good balance between residential and commercial. And uh, the another side of the problem is also that San Francisco has offices of a lot of tech companies, right? And all of these companies, like while I was there for a summer, every week I'm reading about some new company trying to get rid of their space in San Francisco, mm-hmm. and no one wants to lease them. But they are built to be office spaces, so there, it's non-trivial to remodel them into housing. Um, so there's just a bunch of empty buildings. I forgot which. I think Salesforce was trying to cut down on their space. Um, I think Uber was trying to cut down on their space in San Francisco, and there is no takers. uh there's just buildings and buildings of people where employees are still working from home they don't need that space and they have figured out during the pandemic that they can do this operation from another a little smaller city away from the coast um so it's just it's kind of a ghost town i mean at this point i can make this claim and i can stand by it that san francisco is as as much of a dying city as calcutta is and calcutta is a dying city at least the what and just for the viewers i am from calcutta and i love the city what plays in the favor of san francisco is that uh its outskirts are still very alive and they're not going to die anytime soon yep oakland bay area is a good place to live in like that's why it, it attracts so many people it's not exactly uh, a place to live in i mean is it not it's like new york you know like it's like everyone says oh my god you should live there that's where the life is and that's why you put yourself through torture that's what it is uh, traffic is horrible you cannot buy a house unless you are like working at facebook yep. or something yep. um, very rich you have to pay tolls everywhere and uh, all the neighborhoods are very like tending to get culturally segregated because mm. there's, there's so many immigrants and they don't ever have to leave their own little bubble um So I would argue it's not really a great place to live in unless you have you are like rolling around in money. What was your first introduction to San Francisco? What do you mean? Where did you hear about San Francisco growing up for the first time? Bay Area. Of course. No, no. Bay Area. Like, when did you hear about San Francisco's existence? I don't remember, but it was in college or before that, and it was because someone worked there or whatever. Okay, like, okay. 
I remember when I heard uh, of San Francisco for the first time, when I was Forrest Gump, there was this song in there. Uh, if you are going to San Francisco, be sure to wear a flower in your hair. Mm-hmm. What a great song, man! That was that's the first time I heard of San Francisco. Then Forrest Gump had that whole scene where, I mean, the whole Black Panther thing where Jenny was traveling um, from DC to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, I've also heard great things about uh, the train from Chicago to San Francisco, and I was meaning to do that, but I couldn't. Oh wow! Because of time. Uh, Interesting. Because... I I should also I should do that sometime. Because it has great views, apparently. Nice. And and uh, speaking of which, I've also learned a terrible fact about uh, train system here. Uh, apparently, the normal Amtrak ticket you get from Chicago to San Francisco, like normal, being almost as costly as a flight. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to sit up for 52 hours sit up as in so there is no sleeper class there is not like oh. there is to sleep it's a 52 hour journey and you it's just a seat okay uh, that sucks exactly which is horrible uh if you can sleep but then that will cost you somewhere close to 700 dollars for one day um which is kind of stupid and i don't know why they would do that um but i i have heard that despite that even if you have to sit up it goes through like montana and wyoming and all of those nice places utah and you get a- amazing views and i think there is something about the schedule that like you have to go from chicago to san francisco not the other way around to see these views in daytime um but yeah that's something i want to do chicago to seattle also i've heard is great but chicago to san francisco is especially great and i'm missing san francisco right now my first day in the city i was walking around uh, and uh, i came across this restaurant dude there's so many good restaurants in there where they like there was this one particular place so in the doorway they had a big uh, poster mm-hmm. where scorsese writes like that he loves that place and he writes things about that and it is okay i'm going to go back again to the the analogy of san francisco and kolkata because kolkata the big restaurants in kolkata do that they say like ravindranath used to come and eat here <laughs> things like that i think it's a very normal restaurant thing um okay. that um, these two cities might have more uh, mm. quote and quote pseudo intellectual crowd kind yes. of people versus like i so i i went to a restaurant in fremont and that had pictures of hrithik roshan and rajesh khanna because it was like a indian restaurant right. that restaurant has been around for 40 years so they had pictures of like rajesh khanna not very old you know amitabh bachchan not very old and since then uh, so i think it's a very normal restaurant thing to do if you're a good restaurant famous people will come he will put pictures of them we often talk about how nice people are in the midwest mm-hmm. but in san francisco i met some really nice people san francisco berkeley yeah. I mean, I think uh, West Coast nice is nicer because uh, they're they're not like oh I'll be nice to your face nice they're like truly nice gentle people with flower in their hair. Uh, I mean, hmm. again, it's a, I don't know. Um, but yeah, anyway, I think uh, yeah. But San Francisco is amazing. I highly recommend. Ten on ten recommend. Do not judge San Francisco the way you judge LA. because uh, a friend of mine was asking me how was california and i was like yeah people are very outdoorsy people are very nice and you have a lot of patience and things like that and you he's can't, like you can you cannot ask a question like that right what? i interrupted again sorry question like, like a, a question like uh, how was california because california is so big yeah but i mean whatever he asked i told him about the part of california i saw bolo bolo um i could have corrected him and just not given him any use yeah. um but i don't always do that i just tell people what i saw um so but anyway he was like oh i heard people there are very materialistic and i was just like i think that's you that's southern california you are mixing those up um so yeah not all california is hollywood and that's a non trivial fact that everyone doesn't know so there we go all right so that is it for today we will hopefully come back again sometime with another topic to discuss <laughs> um yeah right all right we did it bye bye awesome
Okay, stop recording.